Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. In today's video I will be replacing my slightly grotty standard R53 brakes with my brand spanking new gorgeous R56 brake upgrade kit. Let me show you what I've got. So this is roughly what you would get if you were to order this. This part here is the base kit. So you would have the caliper, the carrier and the braided lines. These braided lines take the R56 upgrade to the R53. So they're brilliant. You can also get those in quite a range of colours. They're from HEL. I'll pop a link below. And then these are carriers. These are BMW parts made by TRW. Um, there is a little bit of text down here where it says mini. When you receive the calipers normally, there will be a bit of putty covering that over, but if you scratch out the putty, you get the text. Obviously they also arrive just normal metal silver, um, but I wanted these to be blue so I've painted those, but I'm really pleased with how they've come out. At the same time, for you can either have those on your own and you do your own disc and pads or we can provide the disc and pads for you as well. This is basically a setup just for a normal daily driver because that is pretty much what it's going to be used for. However, if you do need disc and pads for fast road or for track use, um, then that's also great. We, we do quite a lot of those packs as well. As a overall price for what I've got in front of me here with disc and pads included, it's probably about £350. Um, depending on what you go for. So it doesn't break the bank um, and it really, really makes a huge difference as you will see once they're on the car as well. So obviously I'm already working on my car but you would obviously need to jack the car up and take off the wheel first of all. I like losing things so pretty much every time I take the wheel off I pop these in the holes so I don't know where they are. So obviously these come out first and then we can make a start. So the first job will be to undo this Torx bolt here. Um, this is a bit of an annoying job. I am going to use a gun for this um, because otherwise the disc spins. So get this one off first. This is a T50. So with the Torx bolt out, the next job will, to, will be to remove this wire. Do that by taking off this little hat and then pulling that up and over and then pulling this wire out. Like so. So that is now out of the way. The next job will be to take off this 16mm bolt at the top here and then there is one as well down the bottom here, I'm not sure if it can be particularly easy to see, but they are both 16mm, one there and one at the top, so we'll be cracking those off. These are going to be quite difficult, so I have a break bar with me next to me in the faint hopes I'm going to be strong enough to do this myself. I don't hold up too much of it. So now you want to take out the brake line grommet. You should be able to do this by just levering it a little bit that's it and now that is free the next job will be to take out the brake line at the top here so this is a 17 mil i believe that's an 11 mil you will hold one in place whilst undoing the other and then the brake line should come free as a word of warning obviously as this becomes loose the brake fluid will start to drip down so just make sure that you have some towels ready to mop it up as it drips so because of where the nuts are located, they can get 
corroded in bits and pieces with the salt and rubbish that comes off the road. So when you are undoing these, really take care not to round them off because allowing for solid brake lines also in this project may not be something that you may have thought about. So with the brake line free and the sensor free, the disc and pads and calipers and whole caboodle can now come forward. Obviously it is still quite loose, so just take care. But we are now free. So I'm going to use the opportunity while this is all a free area to just clean up my hubs. I'm just using a normal wire brush all around the front and then all around the edge as well. So now we are ready to start reassembling the new caliper and carriers. The first job that we do is to put the disc back on. I absolutely think these are the most beautiful discs ever. And then the Torx bolt goes back in just to hold it in place. I'm not going to do it particularly tight, just tight enough to hold it there for the time being. None of this going. What hole are you trying to make sure it's facing the right way? Right. I <laughs> knew that my gun is. That's on the undo. That's on the undo. That's on the undo. That's it. Yay! So next up will be your carrier. This uh, comes with the clips, so pop those into place and then it slots behind and these are the bolt holes that we took out earlier. You don't actually have to replace these bolts, although if they are really terrible or rusty, it's probably a good idea, but these ones are fine to reuse. So you pop it in the back and then it goes into the gap where the bolts go in, like so. So with the carrier in place it's now time to put the pads in. If you look there are different shapes. So this is the one with the clip that we take out. That one goes at the back, this one goes at the front. They just slot in the holes in the clips like so. This bit is the slightly nerve wracking bit because I've painted them myself. Ordinarily, if you were to pay for professional painting, they go away to a local company who pop on a stronger lacquer. But um, I wanted to do this myself <laughs> to say that I've done the whole car, so I'm just being a little bit more careful. Pads are now in place. So in the kit you will also get two new bolts. These bolts, I'll pass you the torch, these bolts go into these two holes here at the back and those two connect to inside these bolts here. One at the top, one at the bottom obviously. So we will start assembling that next still being terribly careful of my poor little paint. Okay, they are 13 millimeter bolts, so just tighten those up. So next up we will be winding the new braided line in through the back here, there is a little hole at the back. You can kind of do it while it's standing up and just literally twist the wire and it will go 
down and around. It's kind of a little bit hard to get it started, but once it's started, started then you will be alright. Okay, so this will then snake back up to the brake line at the top here, like so. So now the brake line is connected either end, you just have to tap this grommet into the area. This is kind of a tight fit, but you should be able to... Uh, no, you will burn. So now all that remains is to put the sensor into place. Take off the hat again, push this over. It's a lot harder to get them on because it's a different size. And that is it. And that is it. I mean, it's honestly really simple considering some of the other jobs that we've been tackling. So I think it looks really, really good. There is just one thing to remain, which will be to bleed the brake system, which I will be doing next for you. I'm not actually changing my calipers at the back, so I'm just going to pop those back on with some new distant pads and then bleed the system. So, time to bleed the brakes. Minis are notoriously, annoyingly difficult to bleed. We have tried doing it the absolute bog standard way, it doesn't really work. So, what you need to do is you set this up. This needs to be probably no more than about 28 because the system can't really take it much more than that. So you just pump it at the top until it reaches that. You then start with the rear passenger, rear driver, front driver, then front passenger. So I have a helpful assistant who is going to press the pump the brake for me. And then I will take you around to the back to see what happens when I take off the brake nipple and how the fluid comes out and what you're looking for. So here we are. This is the rear passenger caliper that we've just put on. Um, this is the bleed nipple here around the back. And this is the catch canister that you will get when you get your... Um, what are we talking about? <laughs> the pressure bleeder set. That's what you will get. This will catch all of the fluids that you obviously will be pumping out the system. The end of this goes to on the end of your bleed nipple, like so. It does have this if you want to hang it up and things. This uh, bolt here is a 10mm bolt, so Jonathan is in the driver's seat ready to pump. I will crack this open. He will then start pumping the brake pedal and then through here it should come out the old brake fluid, what is remaining inside the system. There's something hanging on this. That's nice. Um, so then he will start pumping and it will come through hopefully the grotty nasty stuff with air bubbles and goodness knows what. And then we are looking for the new clear fluid coming through. Once that's coming through with no air bubbles, that's when we know it's time to stop. I will tell Jonathan to stop pumping and then I will do this nipple back up. That is the theory. <laughs> Hopefully this will work. Okay, so first of all, this is on. Let's just undo this first. Okay, it's open, Jonathan. Yeah. So we've still got discoloured stuff coming through with the air bubbles. Okay, it 
doesn't look like there's too many air bubbles at the moment, but it's still a caramelly colour. Okay, so we haven't had any air in the last sort of 10 or so pumps, so Jonathan's just going to stop pumping it and then we will do this nipple back up and I will show you what sort of fluid we've caught just on the first caliper. Okay, so this is what we have got out of the rear. You'll see that it's actually, it's kind of like a murky brown pond watery kind of colour. We will now go on to the rear driver's side, just over there, and do the same process all over again. Okay, so here we are on the rear driver's side this time. Here is the nipple, so we will just be popping this over the top, like so. Cracking it open. And then Jonathan will start to pump again. So as you can see, this is now the clean colour, so Jonathan will stop pumping. There is no air and it hasn't been for a few goes, so I will just tighten it back up. So this is now the front driver's side. Because this is the R56 upgrade kit, this nipple now becomes uh, 11 millimeters. So exactly the same process as before. Pop this on the end. Okay, and now Jonathan can start pumping again. Completely clear now. No, nothing, but I desperately need tissue, it's going everywhere. Okay, really? Yep. Doesn't need a lot. Right, hooray Henry, this is the last one. So we are now at the front passenger side. I'll just be undoing the hat on this little nipple bit. Ah, oh, this has also got the sensor on this one, so just pop that off. Pop this over the top. Grab the 11 mil. open and now Jonathan can start pumping. <laughs> okay so this is coming out clear with no air bubbles too so Jonathan will stop pumping, keep his foot on the brake pedal for me whilst I do it up. So, uh, note to self, the top of that came off. So, yeah, get brake fluid pretty much everywhere, even over the gearbox. Everywhere. Good work, 
James. And that is the brake bled. So I will need to check my pedal. If it is still a little bit spongy, um, I will need to do this whole process all over again and again and again until it is good. Obviously, brakes are not something that you want to just mess around with. So this is how much came out in the end. It's kind of difficult to see in this light, but it is a really horrible brownie colour. That's what you're looking for. But that is essentially the R56 brake upgrade. It is obviously dead simple. They look amazing. Once they are outside in proper daylight, I will take some really good pictures of them so you can see what exactly it looks like. And then hopefully, once it's past its MOT, I should be able to show you how much better they perform as well. Thank you for watching, guys. If you could leave a comment or a like or a subscribe, that would be brilliant and make my day. Um, and hopefully see you again in the next video.